Hello, welcome to Chapter 7, Discovering Dynamesh in the ZBrush Core. So this is probably the most popular feature found within the ZBrush Core. This feature is used by any artist that's using ZBrush to sculpt and make their artwork. This is going to allow us to begin working on our pieces, and as the polygons are de deformed, Dynamesh is going to clean it up. So if I turn on our polyframe here by using the shortcut Shift F, which you can see right here, the polyframe button in the shortcut being Shift F. So I can tap on this button or I can use our shortcuts. You will see polygons that we have on the mesh of this particular skull. So what will start to happen is if we begin to start to sculpt, so I'm gonna to switch to my move brush, and I did that by hitting the B key to pull up our brush palette. Then I hit the M key, so only the brushes that start with M are visible. And you can see there's little letters above that. That's the third shortcut to automatically select that brush, which you can see this is the letter V. So I can use that shortcut that I've just done, which is B, M, B, or I can simply just click on the move brush down here. So we're gonna get pretty extreme here and maybe pull this mandible down quite a bit. And you can see how much the polygons start to get stretched when you really start to pull on the surface, specifically in this area right here. So what's gonna be nice about Dynamesh is it's going to clean up this area and keep the polygons at the equal size so when we begin to sculpt, we can have a consistent stroke across the surface. So where do we find Dynamesh? It's located here in our tool palette under geometry, and then we're gonna click on Dynamesh. So I'm gonna take the time in this video just to cover the Dynamesh button and how it works in our resolution slider. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the Dynamesh, and you can see automatically what happened to this area. So this is what we have now. I'm gonna undo, and I'm gonna show what we had before, and now I'm gonna redo, and you can see with the Dynamesh on now, we have a nice equal distributed of polygons in that area of the skull now. Let's show you a little more extreme example. So I'm gonna click on the B, to pull up my brush palette, C, to look at just the brushes that start with C, and I'm gonna grab that clay build up. So maybe I wanna start putting some big deformation through here, sculpturally, which obviously human head doesn't have this, but it really can show how destructive it can be to the surface, where it's really pulling on this geometry in the area. So I kinda of want more clay there is how I like to think about it. So I'm gonna hold down the control key and I'm just gonna click and drag anywhere in my open document and you can see that ZBrush is fixing that area. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna undo to show you what we had and now I'm gonna redo to show you what we get now that we're in Dynamesh mode. So as we're sculpting, all we have to do is if I start adding anything to my surface here, start building up some more of my surface or add clay as I like to call it, some of our geometry is getting stretched a lot, so I'm gonna hold down control and I'm gonna click and drag. And you can see that is all repaired and I can smooth it out a little bit more if I want to. I can dig into our surface if I want to and really start stretching those polygons. But all I have to do is hold down that control key and I can click and drag. And you can see that repairs the surface or adds more clay to the area that I need it. So it just doesn't end there. We can also fuse with Dynamesh or we can even cut into the surface with other pieces of geometry. So the best way to do this is using our insert mesh brushes. So I'm gonna hit B for our brush palette. I'm gonna hit I. So only the brushes that pop open visibly are the brushes that start with I. I'm gonna select this brush right here which is IMMB parts. So that IMM stands for insert multi mesh. So what that means is this particular brush has multiple pieces of meshes attached to it. So to see those pieces, I'm just gonna hit the M key and you can see there are several different eyes, mouths, there's a female arm and a male arm. There's even dog parts here, a couple heads. I'm gonna grab the nose, so I'm just gonna tap and you can see I'm in symmetry mode, but I'm gonna work my way to the middle and you see that 
comes together as one. And I'm just going to pull out and I get now a nose. So now what's going to happen is because we're using the insert mesh brush, the whole rest of the skull has been masked off, but the nose is not. This allows me maybe to move things around. So let's grab our move brush by tapping down here. And I'll make my draw size a little bit bigger. So I've hit the S key so I can pull up that cursor. And I'm in symmetry mode so I can start really manipulating this. And we're going to give him some kind of an ugly nose. Just have some fun here with it. Right? And start moving that around. Oh, wow. Really giving him a bad nose. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to clear our mask. So I'm going to hold down Control. I'm going to click and drag. That'll clear our mask. And again, I'm going to want to do that again by holding Control and click and dragging. And what ZBrush will do is because we're in the DynaMesh mode, it's going to fuse the nose with the face. So you can see even when I smooth, everything is connected. At any point in time, I can continue to reevaluate the surface by holding that Control, click and drag. So let's try that with a different insert mesh brush. So I'm going to hit B, I'm going to hit I, I'm going to select this IMM primitives. Right? And so that's an IMM brush, which means there's multiple pieces of geometry. So I'm going to hit the M key, and I'm going to grab the sphere. So maybe I want to use the sphere to give them some eyes. So I'm just going to click and drag and say that looks good to me. Hold down that control key, click and drag anywhere in the open document to clear my mask. And the same thing to re dynamesh my surface. And you can see now, I'm going to turn off my poly frame, the eyes are fusing with the skull. So now what's great about this is we can even hold the alt key, click and drag, and you'll see that the sphere is inversed. This is an indicator to you that that sphere is going to be used now to cut into the surface. So I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm going to click and drag. That'll clear my mask. And then again, control key, click and drag. And you can see that sphere has now been used to cut into the surface. I'll turn off my poly frame so you can really see what that looks like. And now we have not only just our sculpting brushes, but we can use shapes to build a surface, cut into a surface. Now, there's going to be times where maybe I want to hold more of my detail that I'm starting to sculpt. So, for example, let's go ahead and select our Dame Standard brush here. And there's a really great brush to maybe add some detail to our face. So, because our resolution right now is sitting at 128, when we re -dynamesh, you can see that it's doesn't make the cleanest line here and it's just because we don't have enough information or clay there to hold that surface okay so you can see I want to put a little more clay or geometry here so I'm gonna change my resolution by click and dragging to what I want so I can move this slider back and forth wherever I want when I let go though you'll see that there's a red box highlighting the numbers this is gonna allow me maybe to type in a value so I'm going to type in the 504, and you can see that resolution automatically jumps to that number. And then now if I go and sculpt on my surface, and then hold control, click, and drag, you'll see that ZBrush has now reevaluating the surface and giving us a lot more polygons to use. So I'm going to undo. This is what we had at 128, and I'm going to redo, and this is what we have at 504. You may notice up here our polygon count number is changing. So I'm going to undo. We're sitting around 47,000 polygons. I'm going to redo. And now we're sitting at 733,000 polygons. So what's nice about this is if I start to say smooth the surface down and really get rid of maybe some of that un... and maybe get rid of some of that surface that I don't want. And now I can continue to work with this brush that really cuts nice into the surface. And when I read Dynamesh, you can see that's really being held now. And we're not getting what we were here. So even if I was to smooth this edge down a little bit here, and then read Dynamesh, you can see that is really being maintained now. And this is because we've upped our resolution to give us more polygons or more clay. I would recommend slowly moving up your resolution and building your surface in a step-by-step -step process. However, you're definitely going to want to check out 
our next chapter eight, which will be focused on our subdivision levels. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in chapter eight. Happy ZBrushing.